anti-climate. But nevertheless, I've been given the space to speak, and this afternoon we are all, we are all about our space. And our space is shrinking, and we're here to say no to our space shrinking. So ladies and gentlemen, um, similar to Emma, but unlike Suba, I'm also very clumsy with protocol. And uh, I see before me such great diversity and um, types of dignitaries that if I tried to do protocol now, I would probably trip over my tongue and embarrass myself. So I won't do that. Instead, I will just greet you. My sisters, starting with the sisters because we have few up here, my sisters and my brothers, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hamjambu. Um, we're very grateful that you could make it under such a short notice and in such large numbers. Um, to have this discussion about issues that are very dear to us, issues that are very important and very pertinent. And for us, we've been working on the constitutional reform process. I think um, part of a, a turning point on the next phase of the constitutional implementation process. But before I go into those details, um, we also realized, because as we were inviting you for the meeting, we did a little bit of a survey, um, but we also realized that there's not a sufficient understanding around the PBO Act. And I know there's a session on the PBO Act coming next, and Suva has highlighted some of the benefits of the PBO Act. So I'll also re-emphasize, um, because my, my, my organization does civic education, I just do a little bit of civic education, ask you to bear with me, and highlight some of the, chat, the benefits of the PBO Act, and then speak to our journey um, to get into the PBO Act and the issue of shrinking civic space. And uh, Suba has highlighted some of the things, but that also includes that the PBO Act 2013 um, creates an enabling legal, regulatory, and institutional environment for PBOs. And who doesn't want that? We all do. It acknowledges the service, capacity building, and advocacy roles across all sectors. Now, when was the last time any legislation acknowledged the good that we do? Um, what we normally hear in the media is the bad that we do occasionally. It holds the sector to high accountability and transparency standards. And don't we all want that? After all, what's chapter six in the Constitution about? What are our national values and principles about? But it also promotes a new sense of cooperation and shared responsibilities between the government, development partners, and stakeholders. So sometimes we are loggerheads, but sometimes we can work together. And the PBO Act provides a framework for how we work together. After all, the end game is the same. We want the best for Kenyans. Um, it enhances leadership standards within the sector aligned to Chapter 6 of the Constitution. And even based on that, we've gone a little bit further as the Civil Society Reference Group and developed the PBO Charter, which I hope is in your parks as well, uh, where we've decided that we are going to hold ourselves accountable. And isn't that a great thing? So why the delay? But it also creates space for an independent regulation and membership agencies and a tribunal which Suba has talked about that can redress some of the complaints we have, either from the public or amongst ourselves. And so all these are great things that we've managed to do with the PBO Act. But ladies and gentlemen, the journey has not been easy and it has not been short. And it looks like it's also not going to come to an end. Um, this process actually, when I was doing the maths, has taken us 10 years. And the constitution took us 20 years. And I say 10 years because in your parts you will have a timeline that starts from 2009. But in 2006, government also did an assessment of the sector and came up with a session of paper that said that the way things are run, especially from the point of the legislative and frameworks, it's insufficient and we need to do something. So government in itself recognized that there was a problem that needed to be fixed. And uh, with the help of people like the Committee of the Wise, uh, many of whom are here today, uh, we started a process from 2009 to 2013 of consulting, um, speaking to Kenyans, speaking to government, including the NGO board, including the NGO council, um, international partners, development partners, and just having a conversation about what would this new legislative framework look like that would be good for the sector, that would encourage accountability in the sector. And when that was concluded in 2013 of January, um, the PBO Act was assented into law by His Excellency Mwai Kibaki. Um, unfortunately, from 2013 to 2016, we've just been on the wall path. We've not seen the realization of the hopes, the aspirations, and the dreams we had in the PBO Act. We've not seen that come to fruition. What we've done instead is that we've been fighting against the retrogressive attempts to amend the PBO Act. And so from 2013 to 2016, we've had about five sets of amendments. I think each one was worse than the last. Um, we've had a task force that came up with recommendations that were neither here nor there. And we've seen other attacks on public uh, benefit organizations, and some of you are here who've been victims of those attacks. 
from arbitrary deregistration, humiliation in the media, and negative propaganda. I'm sure you haven't forgotten the evil society narrative. But are we evil, really? Um, to accounts being frozen and all manner of harassment. In addition to that, there have been some good things in terms of the attempts that we have made to fight some of these attempts. Um, so some of us, um, I think some civil society actors and individuals have gone to cross, court um, to stop amendments and also seeking interpretation on commencement, what that means. And that is awaiting the um, Working very closely with the Honorable Agostino Neto, um, we've also managed to see a bill pushing for commencement of the act get to the second reading um, in Parliament. And so that means to get to the third reading. Of course, we thought all that might not uh, necessarily be necessary. Uh, when on the, 20, on the 9th of September, 2016, as Suba mentioned, and I think he was at the meeting, um, the Devolution Cabinet Secretary, Mwanki Kibuchuri, announced commencement of the PBO Act without changes. And we were just about to put on our party hats, um, but alas. And uh, we thought that would end the intimidation of civil society in Kenya. On the 19th, 10 days later, Kenneth Otieno successfully got a court injunction from the High Court Justice, uh, George Olunga, to stop the government printers from publishing the commencement date, citing contradictory provisions, constitutional contradictions, and a national security threat. Um, now that court, I think, was, I mean, that case goes to court on Monday, um, but that will be discussed, I think, further on. Um, but, so you see, the journey has been long and it's not yet to move for us. And who will be freedom, not the president? So ladies and gentlemen, a journey of 10 years. I mean, we always say justice delayed is? You ate lunch. Justice delayed is? Justice denied. Thank you. And uh, while we are grateful that the Honorable King Jury has tried to remedy this injustice, um, we hope that he will continue to support us to remedy this injustice and conclude this part of the journey so that we can move on to the next part of the journey, which for me is the most important part. And remember again, justice delayed is justice denied. Now before I disappear, I have to mention a little bit about um, civic space. Um, and to also mention that this meeting is a result of various conversations. So in view of the challenges that we've had around the PBO Act, in view of the challenges that we've had as a sector in terms of harassment and intimidation, not just as civil society, but also as the media and other sectors, um, there have been conversations at county level, conversations at national level, and even recently conversations at regional level about the rate at which space is shrinking or their attempts to shrink this space. Um, the challenges to the PBO Act is only one aspect of the broader shrinking civic space. And of course, as I mentioned, for the last four years, we've seen other attempts to do in that space. So based on these conversations, based on various reflections, um, it has been deemed that it's necessary to form the Civic Space Protection Platform in Kenya. And uh, my colleague, uh, Davis Malome and Faith will speak more about that in the afternoon. But the platform should provide a useful and credible forum in drawing a network of actors, not just civil society, but media, trade unions, faith-based organizations, social movements, academia, the whole spectrum that occupies that space between the family and the state. Um, to have a discussion and to have some action around issues of civic space. While our colleagues will share some of the strategies that have emerged from these dialogues, um, one of the resolutions was to have a public benefit organization leaders meeting. And that's why we are here today. That's why this meeting is happening. So for those who are part of the discussion, this is the meeting you recommended, and it is finally happening. It happened sooner than we thought um, because of the circumstances, but you know, Carpe Diem sees the day. And so we're here not only just to discuss the PBO Act, but to discuss how to counter the shrinking civic spaces and ensure a diverse participation of uh, various actors nationally and regionally. So as I conclude, um, some of you may have gotten an SMS in the morning, um, which was quite controversial. Some of you may not be aware of it. But an SMS was circulating in the morning, and if you'll allow me just one minute to read out what it said. Urgent. Um, certain council members and organizations against uh, and NGOs against PBO Act. Let's all converge at a group park at 11:30 a.m. and head to Jubilee Hall at the All African Conference of Churches of Waiyaki Way and demonstrate against a foreign sponsored PBO Act meeting. We must and must, as in capital letters, ensure that meeting doesn't happen. 
the many of us who have been accredited should enter the venue and cause chaos from within. We have hired goons from Kino and Madare to also assist us disrupt the meeting. Forward and mobilize as many as possible. The event must not happen. Say no to gayism and foreign agenda. And that was sent quite widely in the body to intimidate people. We checked at Uhuru Park, looked very calm, people are down swimming and you know, buying ice cream. And I want to say that the meeting is happening. This meeting, good people, is about our space. As Kenyans, as civil society in Kenya, it is a space provided for in the law, and not just any law in the supreme law of the country, the Constitution of Kenya 2010. It is a space that Kenyans have lost their lives, that Kenyans have lost their loved ones, that Kenyans have lost their health and property to defend, to ensure that we have. So let's make this sacrifice matter. I'm going to be a bit controversial and not insensitive to the people who died in Madara yesterday. But Salman Rushdie once said, how do you defeat terrorism? Don't be terrorist. So ladies and gentlemen, how shall we defeat the attempts to shrink civic space? We shall not be shrunk, and in fact, we shall consolidate our space and we shall expand the space. Karibuni.